Over the course of the last two videos, we've looked at some of the most terrifying weapons ever devised. As interesting as that is, it's kind of depressing. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the least effective weapons in all of history. So without further ado, and in no particular order, to the list. First up, one of my favorites, the double-barreled cannon. You've probably never heard of this abomination, but the idea has been around for a very long time. The concept was the brainchild of Italian gunmaker Antonio Petrini way back in 1642. The idea was simple, fire two cannonballs simultaneously. These cannonballs were linked by a chain, which worked like a massive bola, snapping trees and scything through infantry. At least, that's how it was intended. Fast forward to 1862. A mechanic from Georgia named John Gilliland had managed to raise the funds to build his own double-barreled cannon. The gun was cast in one piece for structural integrity, and featured twin barrels that angled just barely away from each other, intended to stretch the chain taut between the projectiles. Then the testing began. The problem with double-barreled powder weapons is that it's nearly impossible to get them to fire simultaneously. If one fires a fraction of a second sooner than the other, the projectiles can launch way off course and cause serious damage, or, in the worst case scenario, one cannon can fail to fire and send the remaining ball swinging back around to the shooter. With these facts in mind, what do you think happened in Gilliland's tests? If you said, destroyed an innocent cornfield, obliterated unsuspecting trees, and killed a poor unlucky cow, you're right. Next on our list is an especially misguided Soviet invention from World War II. The Russians were in need of a more effective method to take out German tanks, so naturally, they strapped anti-tank mines to the backs of dogs. Here's how it was supposed to work. The dogs would seek out German tanks, crawl under them, and when the detonating rod attached to their explosives hit the bottom of the tank, no more Fido, and no more tank. In practice, it turned out quite differently. The Russians would hide treats under their T-34 tanks to train the dogs to crawl under and fetch them. Easy enough. Except the T-34s had noisy diesel engines and smelled entirely different from the German tanks, which used gasoline-powered engines. So, let's put two and two together here. You train a dog to fetch treats under your own tanks, then you take them into a noisy, chaotic battlefield and set them loose. Where does Spot run? Right under your own tanks. Some dogs wouldn't know what to do, and would come running back to the Russian defenses, where they would bump something with their detonating rod and, uh, play dead. Number three on our list is the Russian Tsar tank from World War I. It would be really cool, if it weren't so horrifyingly useless. The design was almost clever. The designers understood that tanks with caterpillar tracks often got stuck in mud and craters, so instead they opted for giant wheels. When I say giant, I mean these things were huge. Nine meters in diameter. They were intended to help the Tsar tank cross significant obstacles that would stop a traditional tank. Unfortunately, there were some miscalculations with the weight distribution, which led to the smaller rear wheel getting stuck in the mud. This beast would have housed a crew of 18, and been armed with either cannons or machine guns in two turrets, one on top of the carriage and a smaller one slung underneath. Additional machine guns could be placed inside the sponsons, the small armored pods behind the wheels. When the single prototype was ready, the real-world tests began. The trials went well at first, the tank crushed obstacles like trees with ease, but then its fatal flaw was revealed. When the tank reached uneven terrain, the sort that you'd see on the battlefield, the back wheel became hopelessly stuck. The Tsar tank's massive 60-ton weight was so unevenly distributed that it couldn't even be dug out. So there it stayed, never seeing action and slowly rusting away until it was sold for scrap in 1923. As terribly ineffective as the Tsar tank was, it captures the interest of many to this day, and there are rumors it's being considered as a new piece of content for Battlefield 1. The last weapon on our list might just take the cake. It was called the Blue Peacock Nuclear Mine, and it was developed by the British for use in Germany in the 1950s. The project's goal was to bury 10 of these 10 kiloton nuclear mines in the North German plain in preparation for a Soviet invasion from the east. British officials stated that they wanted to not only destroy facilities and installations over a large area, but deny occupation of the area to an enemy for an appreciable time due to contamination. The bombs were to have three methods of detonation. First, they could be triggered by wire from three miles away. Second, they could be set on an eight-day timer. Or third, they would automatically detonate if their anti-tamper devices were tripped. Okay, so they're big nuclear mines. What's the problem with that? Well, aside from how the Germans would have felt if 10 nukes blew up in their backyard, it's how the British solved the temperature problem that earns this weapon a spot on the list. The problem was that German winters can get very cold, especially for metal objects buried in the dirt. The British were concerned that the sensitive electronics inside the mines would fail after a few days of extreme cold, so they devised a plan to keep them warm throughout the winter. The proposed solution? Bury live chickens with the bombs. That's right, the plan was to bury live birds along with feed and chicken wire to keep them from pecking at the bombs. Apparently, their body temperature alone would have been sufficient to keep the electronics functioning properly. Luckily for everyone, the project was scrapped in 1958 out of concern for the nuclear fallout and political risks of burying nuclear weapons in Allied territory. 
Of course, there have been plenty of other ineffective, misguided, and just plain stupid weapons developed throughout history. I've just provided a few to spark your interest. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and keep up to date with the latest content. Feel free to leave a like or a dislike as you please, and tell me about your favorite failed weapons in the comments. You can watch my previous video by clicking here, or binge watch them all by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.